Welcome back to Kids Life. Now, attention-seeking behaviour is by far the most common form of misbehaviour in families, particularly with kids who think the entire world revolves around them. Now, Michael Gross, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Now, how do you identify this sort of uh, behaviour in children? You know pretty quickly by your feelings, um, and it's basically you're annoyed. You feel like you've been swatting flies all day, and at the end of the day, after you've responded to what seems like a million little attention-seeking behaviours, you just feel annoyed. So that's the number one. The other issue is actually, imagine if you're not there, would the behaviour exist without you? Yes. So that's another little test. Why do kids do this? Why do they misbehave or attention-seek? Sometimes it's because we've trained them, we've often given them so much attention, particularly when they're younger, that they think it's almost a right in, in a certain way. Um, and so what kids have actually got to learn that they can't always have you um, all the time. There's times when they get some attention, there's times when they don't. So I guess the number one tip there is be careful that you don't become your kid's home ent entertainment machine mm -hmm. and keeping them constantly occupied. Um, there's also that notion that some kids think that I only belong when I'm the centre of attention mm. as well. Uh, so we want kids actually to feel they belong by being, you know, by helping and doing positive things. Yep. So there's a number of issues there, but largely if parents keep paying off and giving uh, payoffs to certain behaviours, well, kids will often learn that this is a great way to keep mum or dad busy with me, so I'll keep doing it. So little things like clowning or sometimes being the shy child or the walking question mark. Um, yep. you know, it's, it's in all sorts of little behaviours. I've even known sometimes eating or sometimes sibling fighting is a great way of keeping mum or dad involved or getting some attention. Okay. And are there different forms of attention seeking? Like is some of it passive? Like, or Yeah, good question. I see the notion of attention seeking in two forms. One, it's um, help me behaviours. Yep. It's all, I call them help me kids, when there's lots of little things or behaviours which make parents help them and, and be at their service, such as forgetting things, um, it, it is a very common one. And there's another one I call them notice me behaviours, which are a little bit more active, which are a little bit like clowning or when the phone rings, the child comes and sits on mum's knee, you notice me. Yeah. So it's all sorts of behaviours. So it's help me behaviours yeah. and it's notice me behaviours. Now there's nothing wrong with parents helping their kids or noticing their kids but when it happens all the time or when it happens in inappropriate times then it becomes attention seeking. Mm. So the notion of, I always look at what does a situation require and if a situation requires that me as a, a dad or, or a mum is on the phone for two or three minutes uh, and you've got a young child I think you should be able to be left on your own for a couple of minutes mm. and the situation requires your child to leave you and keep themselves occupied. If they're suddenly coming for you for attention, that's attention seeking. Absolutely. Do you think it's a fine line? Is it hard for parents to identify this, do you think? Yeah, I've found a lot of parents actually, when I talk about this, they don't realise it's attention seeking, they just see it as normal. Mm. They just see it as, as normal behaviour. Um, and often when people talk about misbehaviour, they think more in terms of kids when they're uncooperative. But a lot of these annoying types of behaviours which just keep mum and dad busy with them mm. uh, are the, are the behaviours which um, really tire parents out and, and you know what do you deal with them I guess one of the things you do is actually try to ignore some of it or put your attention elsewhere yep. so if kids are always constantly wanting you to to attend to them um, give them a little bit and say no not now and you know in five more minutes or ten more minutes so not always responding to kids yep. I think there's another thing actually too that we need to make kids feel quite useful I find I found that there's a group of kids who actually who often don't get a chance to feel useful at home, home or be valued, then they become valued or be, because they're the pest. And so yes. they'll do that sort of stuff. And I, I guess the third thing is, is, is make sure you give kids what I call premium quality attention or A grade attention. And what's that? <laughs> which is really attending to them. This is your time now, let's have a read, let's play whatever it is for the 10, 15 minutes and, and focus on them. Yep. Give them that time and, uh, and now, right, now it's my time or now you know, we move away. Um, often when kids get that really good A-grade attention, um, they're less likely to go for B-grade attention or lower quality attention, which they get when they misbehave. Yeah. Um, and that's, that, again, is a fine line, but I'm sure people can work out the difference. And the learning is for kids too, is that once they've had you know, some reasonable amount of attention, they can't have you all the time. Mm. Uh, and then that's very much a matter of switching off from kids at, at that time. And kids sort of learn after a period of time that mum's not going to keep responding to this or dad's not going to keep responding to this. 
Um, and so it's very much that notion of behaviour has a bit of a purpose. So recognise uh, attention seeking and yep. you'll know it because you just feel annoyed. Yes. If you want to check, just imagine would this happen if you're not around? And if you think, no, it wouldn't if I wasn't around, then you'll have an understanding that perhaps this is for, for your, the purpose of keeping you busy. And then change the way you approach kids or, or change the way that you react to them so you're not always reacting to that stuff. Fantastic. That's great advice. Thanks, Michael. That's a pleasure.